Hello guys, I hope you are all doing well. In this video, I'll show you how to solve the problem lead code subarray sum equal to k. So let's get started. So the problem is that they give us an array of integers and they ask us to return the total number of subarrays whose sum equal to k. So before I start showing you how the techniques that I'm going to use to solve the problem, we need to ask some questions about the details of the input array. And that's what you should do during calling interview. You need to ask the interviewer about the input so that you can have a clear picture about the technique that you're going to use and also how you're going to solve it. So the first question is about the input array. Is the array only contain positive integers or only negative integers or it's mixed? So let's say in this example, we have an array of only positive integers. The second question is we have a sorted array or not. So in this example, we don't have a sorted array. The third question is about the subarray. It is a contiguous sequence of elements or not. So in this example, the subarray are contiguous. The last question is that what if the input was empty? So here in the details with, or during calling interview, the interviewer can say that the subarray should have at least one element. So based on those conditions, we can now choose the best technique to solve this problem. So if the input array have only positive integers, the best and the easy technique to solve it is by using sliding window technique. So let's take an example so I can show you step by step how the technique gonna work so we have this input array that have only positive numbers and we have the target which is 12 so the window technique is two pointer based algorithm when we use the two pointer to search for the sub array and we use the sum of the window to check if the sum is equal to the target so let's initialize two pointers start and end both start at the first integer 4 so since we have only positive integer inside the array if we expand the window the sum will be increased and if we make the window smaller, the sum of the window will be decreased. So the sum equal to 4 and 4 is less than the target, which is 12. So we need to expand the window by moving the end by 1. So here the total will be 6 and 6 is smaller than the target. So we need to expand the window by moving again the end pointer by 1. The same thing for the current window sum, still smaller than the target. So we move the end pointer by 1. So here the sum of the window will be 13 and 13 is bigger than the target 12. So we need to make the window smaller so we subtract the value at the start pointer and we move the start pointer by one and that's gonna make the window smaller so the current sum will be nine and nine is smaller than the target so we move the end of the window by one and we calculate the sum so after moving the end window the sum of this window will be equal to the target means we found the first sub array that if we sum all the integer inside him we will get a result of 12. so what we need to do here is increase the counter by one and we make the window smaller by moving the start to the next integer and also we subtract the integer that are the start pointer so here the total of the window are 10 so we need to make the window bigger by moving again the end pointer by one so the current sum of the window will be 11 means we need to make the window bigger again by moving the end pointer by one so here the current sum of the window will be 13 which is bigger than the target 12 so we subtract the integer where the start pointer are pointing and we move the start by one then we sum up the window which gonna give us 12 that are equal to the target 12 means we found another sum of contiguous subarray that are equal to the target so I increase the counter by one and finally we stop the loop because even if we move the start or we move both of them by one means we, we move the start by one and we reduce the end by one we will have a result less than the target because we have already processed this part when we found that the sum of the window was 12 and remember guys that the sliding window technique only works when we have only an array of positive integer. So the time complexity of the solution is often because we are looping throughout the array once and the space complexity is off one because since we are not creating any data structure to store the result just variables. That's it guys so let's jump at coding the solution. So first we initialize two variables start and end that represent the start and the end of the window and we set their value to be zero. Then we initialize a variable called total which is going to be the total of the current window and set his value to be the first number of the array. Then we initialize a variable called counter and set his value to be zero and we use the start pointer to iterate throughout the array while the start is less than the length of the array first we set one of the important condition which is when the start become greater than the end pointer in this case we want to move the end to the start and the start another window and also change the total to be the number where the start pointer 
are pointing. Then we set another if statement. If the total of the window is smaller than the K, it means the target, we move the end by one. And we set another if statement that handle the case where the end reached the end of the array. So at this point, we will break the loop and return the result. If not, we continue by adding numbers at the end pointer to the total, means we expand the window. Then we set another condition. If the total is bigger than the target key, we subtract the number at the start from the total and we move the start pointer by one. Otherwise, if the total equal to the target, we increase the counter by one and we subtract the number at the start from the total and we move the start by one. Finally, we return counter variable. So the second way to solve this problem is by using prefix sum and it's a little bit challenging for beginners. So the prefix sum technique is also known as cumulative sum technique and it's used to calculate sums of element in a contiguous segment of an array. And also it is the best way to solve subarray sum equal k, so it means this problem, when the input array have positive and negative integers, means it's mixed. So let's take an example so that I can show you how it's gonna work. So let's say we have this input array and the target is equal to 3. To represent the perfect sum, we're going to use a variable called sum, which is going to help us keep track of the cumulative sum of integers in the array. Then we're going to use a dictionary to store the number. The key will be the cumulative sums and the value will be the number of times we've seen that sum as the value. And we initialize a counter variable to store the number of subarray that are equal to the target k. Then we loop throughout the array starting at the first integer 1 so we add it to the sum that represent the prefix sum. So the first condition is that we check if the current sum is equal to the target k. If true, that means that we found the first subarray and we increase the counter by one. So here we have one less than the target. Then we move to look up for the second condition is that we need to check if the difference between the sum and the target is inside the dictionary. And the idea here is that we want to check if we already have subarray that are equal to the sum because if it's true, that means that the subarray from the key inside the dictionary which is the difference between the current sum and k and also it's like we calculate how many numbers we need to remove so that we can have the subarray equal to the target k so let's continue so that you can see what i try to explain to you so we have so we store the first sum in the dictionary and we give it a value of one which represent the number of appearance then we move to the next number add it to the sum so the sum gonna be zero and we check if the sum is equal to the the target then we calculate the difference between the sum and the target it's like we try to find a subarray that was equal to the target then we store the one inside the dictionary with value one we move to the next number, the sum is equal to two. So we calculate the difference between two and three, so it's minus one. And then inside the dictionary, we don't have minus one, so we add the current sum to the dictionary and we give it a value one as the first time we have seen it. Then we move to the next number, which is one, so we add it to the sum and that's gonna give us three. So we check if the sum is equal to the target k and here it's true. So we found the first subarray that have a total equal to the target, so we increase the counter by one. And then we check if we can find another subarray that are equal to the target k. So we calculate the difference between the sum and the target, which is going to give us zero. And we look up for zero inside the dictionary. It's like we eliminate the subarray that have the sum zero, which is the subarray minus one and one. So that we can have the second subarray that are equal to the target k, which is and those three ones. So we increase the counter by one, which is the value of the key one inside the dictionary. So we add the current sum three to the dictionary with a value one. Then we move to the next number three. So we add it to the sum three and that's gonna give us six. So here the sum are not equal to the target k. So we calculate the difference between the sum and the target. So we can check if there is another sub array that are equal to the target. So we have six minus three. We take the three and we'll look up for it inside the dictionary of sums. So it's like we eliminate subarray that have the sum equal to three and we increase the counter by one, which is the value of the key tree. Finally, we return the counter. So the time complexity for the solution is often because we are iterating throughout the array once and the space complexity is often because we are using a dictionary to store the cumulative sum of integers 
and nums. That's it guys, so let's jump at coding the solution. First we initialize a variable called total and set his value to be zero. Then we declare a dictionary and also we initialize a counter and set his value to be zero. Then we loop throughout the array of nums and at each iteration we add the current number to the sum and we check if the sum is equal to the target increase the counter by one and also we check if the difference between the sum and the target are in the dictionary we increase the counter and we check if the sum in the map we increase the value by one otherwise we'll set the key to be the current sum and the value to be one Finally, we return the counter. That's it guys. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.